Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to Lesson 7.8, Compare Mixed Number of Factors and Products. The essential question for this lesson is, how does the size of the product compare to the size of one factor when multiplying fractions greater than one? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to Lesson 7.8, found on page 159, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number two together. The directions say complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. Now our problem for number two says this. It says five-fifths times the mixed number two and three-fourths will be blank compared to the mixed number or the factor two and three-fourths. So we have to decide, is the product of these two numbers going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the factor two and three-fourths? What I notice when I look at my problem is this. I notice that I have the fraction 5 fifths and I'm multiplying that by the mixed number 2 and 3 fourths. Now, I need to pay careful attention to my fraction because what I notice is this. In my fraction, the numerator is the same as my denominator. And when the numerator and the denominator are the same, what that means is the fraction 5 fifths becomes the whole number 1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite my problem and I'm going to turn 5 fifths into the whole number 1 and I know that I'm now multiplying that by the mixed number 2 and 3 fourths. So now our problem becomes 1 times 2 and 3 fourths and we have to decide if the product of those two numbers is going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the factor 2 and 3 fourths. Well, what I know is this. I know that any number times 1 is going to be equal to that number. And that's using the identity property of multiplication. 1 times any number is still going to be that number. So I know that when I multiply 1 times 2 and 3 fourths, my answer or my product is going to be equal to the factor 2 and 3 fourths. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to write down equal to, and once again what I know is this. I know that the fraction 5 fifths, also known as the whole number 1, times the mixed number 2 and 3 fourths will be equal to the factor 2 and 3 fourths because of the identity property of multiplication. Now let's take a look at question number 4. The directions say complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. Well for question 4 they give us the problem 9 times 1 and 4 fifths and we have to decide is the product of these two numbers is it going to be equal to, greater than, or less than 1 and 4 fifths. Now we need to think. If our first factor, and in this case the first factor is a 9, is greater than 1, and I do know that 9 is greater than 1, then the product of these two numbers, the product of 9 times 1 and 4 fifths, will be greater than the second factor. And in this case our second factor is 1 and 4 fifths. So what I know is, once again, 9 times 1 and 4 fifths will be greater than, so we're going to go ahead and write down greater than, it will be greater than 1 and 4 fifths. Because once again, if I were to multiply or take 1 and 4 fifths and multiply it by 1, I know that 1 times 1 and 4 fifths would be equal to 1 and 4 fifths, but once again, because my first factor is greater than 1, it's a 9, that means the product has to be greater than that second factor, which is 1 and 4 fifths. Now let's take a look at question number 6. Once again, the directions say complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. Well, for question 6, they give us the problem 3 and 4 ninths times 5 ninths. And once again, we have to decide, will the product of these two numbers be equal to, greater than, or less than, the factor 3 and 4 ninths. When I go back to my problem, what I notice is this. I'm taking 3 and 4 ninths and I'm multiplying it by the fraction 5 ninths. What I know about the fraction 5 ninths is this. I know that 5 ninths is less than 1. And if I multiply a mixed number times a fraction that is less than 1, I know that the product of those two numbers, the product of 3 and 4 ninths times 5 ninths, is going to be less than the factor 3 and 4 ninths. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down less than, because when I take a look back at this, what I know is I'm finding 5 ninths of 3 and 4 ninths. So I'm finding a part of 
3 and 4 ninths. And once again, when I multiply a mixed number times a fraction less than 1, the product of those two numbers has to be less than the factor 3 and 4 ninths. Now, let's take a look at question number 7 together. It's one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and number 7 says, Frazier is making a scale drawing of a doghouse. The dimensions of the drawing will be one-eighth of the dimensions of the actual doghouse. The height of the actual doghouse is 36 and 3 fourths inches. Will the dimensions of Fraser's drawing be equal to, greater than, or less than the dimensions of the actual doghouse? So what we know we have is this. We know that the dimensions of the drawing will be one-eighth of. Now we talked about the phrase one-eighth of, and what we know is, when we have a we're finding one-eighth of, it's like multiplying by one-eighth. Now, we also know the height of the actual doghouse is 36 and 3 fourths inches. So we're finding 1 eighth of 36 and 3 fourths inches. And once again, that means we're going to find the product of 1 eighth and 36 and 3 fourths. Now, what they want to know is, is the drawing going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the dimensions of the actual doghouse? And I know that the dimensions of the actual doghouse are 36 and 3 fourths. So we have to decide, is the product of 1 eighth times 36 and 3 fourths going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the 36 and 3 fourths? Now, once again, what I notice is this. I know that I'm finding 1 eighth of 36 and 3 fourths. So I'm finding a part of that 36 and 3 fourths. I also know that I'm multiplying the, the mixed number 36 and 3 fourths by a number that is less than 1. We're multiplying it by the fraction 1 eighth, which is less than 1. And if I'm multiplying by a number, a fraction that is less than 1, I know that the product of these two numbers will be less than the mixed number. So what I know is we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete this by plugging in less than because I know that the product of 1 eighth times 36 and 3 fourths is going to be less than the mixed number 36 and 3 fourths. Because once again, I'm multiplying by a fraction less than 1. Now, let's take a look at question number 8 together. It's another one of our real world problem solving questions. And number 8 says, George has a recipe that calls for 2 and 1 third cups of flour. He plans to make 1 and a half times the recipe. Will the amount of flour George needs be equal to, greater than, or less than the amount of flour his recipe calls for? Well, what we know that we have is this. We know that George has a recipe that calls for two and a third cups of flour. So we're going to take our two and one third cups of flour. And we also know that he plans to make one and a half times the recipe. So I know that we're, that means we're going to take our 2 and 1 third and we're going to multiply it by the mixed number 1 and 1 half. Now we have to decide, is the amount of flour that George needs going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the amount of flour his recipe calls for? And once again, the amount of flour that his recipe calls for is the 2 and 1 third. So we're going to go ahead and write the 2 and 1 third over here behind the blank. So our job is to decide, is the product of 2 and 1 third times 1 and 1 half going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the amount of flour, which in this case is 2 and 1 thirds, that his recipe calls for? Well, what I know is this. I'm multiplying my mixed number 2 and 1 thirds by a fraction that is greater than 1. 1 and 1 half is greater than 1. And when I multiply 2 and 1 third by a fraction that is greater than 1, that means that the product of these two numbers, the product of 2 and 1 third times 1 and 1 half, is going to be greater than, so we're going to go ahead and write down greater than. Let's go ahead and fill that in. So it will be greater than the factor 2 and 1 third. Because once again, 1 and 1 half is greater than 1, so the product has to be greater than the mixed number 2 and 1 third. Now, your homework for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your GoMath workbook on page 160. 
Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, we want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one, a novice? Number two, an apprentice? Number three, a practitioner? Or number four, an expert? Don't forget, your homework assignment for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your GoMath workbook on page 160. We hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.